Yes, people, welcome back to Process. Today, we are joined by one of my former teammates, professional footballer, Liam Gibson. Welcome to the podcast, mate. Thanks for having us. Thank you. No, no worries, mate. But obviously, we've known each other for a long time, played football, and you're currently in Morecambe. But the main thing, obviously, we want to talk about is your story because you've got a, you've had a lot of setbacks over the last few years within football you know, along other things. But before we jump into that, we're going to start your football career. From the very start, obviously, you've been quite successful, same age as me, now 24. So when did your football career sort of begin? How did you get into football? And then obviously moving on to signing for Newcastle. Um, so actually, it started off like um, with my boys' club back where, where I live, um, Beamish. Um, I played there for a couple of years. I think I was about, I think I was, started off when I was about six. Mm-hmm. Um, played a couple of seasons. So I was, I think I was about eight, eight at the time when I was playing a tournament in Newcastle. The scouts from Newcastle come over to me dad and said, oh, like, does he want to come, like, does he want to come to the development centre? Like, and basically see what he, what he thinks. So, um, my dad told us after the, after the tournament, he was like, oh, like Newcastle, the Newcastle scouts come over, like, um, and he wants to, and he wants you to go to the development centre. Like, what do you think? And me at first, I start, I started crying, right? Because I didn't, I, I didn't like. All, all I knew was like Beamish, like yeah. all I knew was my boys' club. And I'm thinking, like, I don't actually want to go. Like, I'm a bit of an awkward person, so I hate like meeting like new people and stuff. But at the time, I was anyway, and um, so I was crying my eyes out, saying, "I don't want to go. I don't want to go." And my mum and dad were like, "Look, I think you're gonna have to like just at least give it a go and then say what you think." So that's when I started like going to the development centre at Newcastle. Um, and to be fair, like you normally only do like in the development centre, you only normally do like six weeks, don't you? I think. Um, and then they kind of decide whether to like push you up to the academy or not, like to go and actually play, like to go to the academy. Um, and after the six weeks, I got a letter saying, oh, like, well, actually, like, we're not basically come back in another, what, like, come back in a, a month. And like start another six weeks kind of thing because we're not like we're not sure yet. So I'm thinking like oh like obviously don't want us. So anyway, so I, I turned up for the next plot of six weeks. Done the six weeks again and like you play a game. So you play a game at the end of the six weeks against the academy. I don't know if you can remember. And obviously the academy coaches are there watching and they are like kind of look at the like look at all the lads from the development centre and like see if there's anyone who like catches an eye or anything. And um, anyway, so we played this game against against Hughes, and uh, I remember like at the end, I think they would just come and tell your parents like if they like if they're going to take you like to the academy or not. And there was a like I think there was I went in with another lad like we started at the same time, and I started like I got like quite friendly with them. And anyways, at the end of this game, like the coach went over to his like him and his parents, and then like I think they they said oh like can you come and join like. Come and join the academy properly. Mm-hmm. So then, like, no one obviously said anything to me. So I'm thinking, oh, like, that's it. Like, I'm definitely that's me done now. Like, I've already had like I've already had one six weeks. I've yeah. just finished the second one, and no one's like, no what? No one said anything. Um. So I went home, and I'm like, I think even like my parents and that were thinking, oh, um, like that's you done, like kind of thing. I was just, I was just like, I was actually quite happy. I was like, I would just go back to my boys' club and play, like, play for Beamish again. And then I got another letter saying, uh, oh, yeah. like, come, go, like, we're still not sure, like, but you've, like, we think there's, like, something there. So, like, come back for another six weeks. So I'm thinking, like, I just, it's like taking the mick now. Like, I don't, like, oh, do I what come age, up What age was this? Were you, like, an 11-year-old? Uh, no, 12? nah. I was, I think I was about nine, about 10 at the time. I was, like, about 10 at this time when I got, like, the third letter. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm thinking, oh, like, I, I, that's two two times I went now, and they're like they haven't given us anything. So, like, mm. sh- like surely I can't go back for a third time. Like, I look like a bit of a dick. Yeah. Anyways, um, so I turned up for the. I did. I went in the end. I turned up for like this, like the third set of six weeks, and then um, at the end of that one, they like eventually said, "Oh, like, uh, they come into the academy kind of thing," and that's where like obviously I think you, you and like the likes of you, Armour, um, Dan. I th- well, I think I was actually like with our group of players. I think I was one of the last ones, wasn't I, to come in? Yeah, I'm trying to like under 11s. 
we had quite a lot of lads that went all the way through to like 21, 21, 22 yeah. years old. I think, yeah, you would have probably, because I was end of under 10s and Armour was already there, Kyle was already there, Dan was already just, there. Yeah. So, um, I, you would have probably been just, you might have been roughly the same time as me, actually. You, maybe the I think you maybe, I, I think I'm, I think you came in before me. Because mm-hmm. um, I think it was like towards the end of the under 11 season with Paul and Ben. Ah, yeah, um, it would have been. When I first come in. And then, um, so yeah, that's how I kind of, so I was already up against it, like from the start, really. Yeah, it's a lot. I was going to say for young lads, like, I don't know what the system is like now, if it's a similar sort of thing, I haven't got a clue, but that's a lot of like pressure and stuff like that, and a lot of kind of uncertainty, especially when they're getting you doing yeah. your six weeks, you think, right, I've done my six weeks, I've done everything I can, it's either a yes or no, but then for them to just continuously keep doing yeah. that, it, it would have built a little bit of resilience though in you, definitely in terms of like keep having to reprove yourself yeah. and stuff, and then you eventually got that reward which again, probably in terms of the things that you went through later down the life might have helped you a little bit in terms of, yeah. right, the, the future's a little bit uncertain. I don't know what's going to happen, but if I keep on doing the right things, then it'll happen. Um, but for a young man, that's a lot lot of things to go through. Yeah, like you say, I think it was because I was like still, I think I was still only like 10. Like I said before, I was 10 year old and I'd like already done like like three blocks, six weeks. Yeah. I, think. I know. But it's, it's, to be it's, fair, it worked out all right in the end because it ended up... But imagine if I'd like the told us all like, nah, they're just. That's the thing, that sort of thing. It can, especially if you went through six blocks of six weeks, I say three blocks of six weeks, I should say, and then you end up not getting a contract at the end, that would completely kill a young lad. Not like, yeah. imagine like, especially when you're that age, you're telling your mates like, oh, I'm trying to try and clean your castle and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, like, and they're like, what's happening? It's like, oh, they've, they've kept us on another six weeks, or oh, they've kept us on another six weeks, and then getting rejected. It's not only like tough for yourself, but also might be like slightly embarrassing. It might completely kill your passion yeah. and stuff for football. You might end up not wanting to do it again because you you got that fear of rejection. So, like I said, I don't know what the system's like now, but back then that could that could have flipped the kind of complete different way, obviously from the way that you've kind of went down the line. Um, but it's a tough one. So from there, from Newcastle, obviously you got your you went through the the ranks. Do you remember any sign of good memories and stuff? Because you went away to Singapore, didn't you? Yeah, I went to Singapore. I didn't that get was... a chance. I was injured, shock, so I didn't get a go. <laughs> didn't get a go away with that one. How was it? Your experiences from like when you first joined to like your sixteen, like kind of sixteen year old. Um, very good to be fair. Like, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, there was like some decent trips, like you said, like along the way we went to like Singapore. That was just a madness. Like, I think we we're fourteen at the time, and I don't think like I think we we're only playing like forty minutes each way. Like back in England, like just like on a Sunday, mm-hmm. and then we went out there and we like we just jumped up like forty five minutes, and like the heat was just like unbearable. Um, and like I think I remember the first game, I think we were like three and a lot or something, like, two and a lot. And because we're like because we were only used to playing forty minutes, and we were like obviously playing in England, which is like it's normally <laughs> freezing cold. A bit colder. Yeah. Um, by the eight, by the I think they we were three 0 up in the eightieth minute, and we ended up get I think it was we either drew three three or got B four three. Just everyone was just completely gone because how hot it was. Wearing like these massive like long sleeved Newcastle shirts, or like way too big for us all. Um, but to be fair, it was a good experience. Like the country, and that was mad. I just. Yeah, that was one of the things that I, I, I was good. I missed out because it looked like a really professional tournament. Something was a decent little stadium as well. Yeah, and having those experiences when you're young massively helping. I like that was one of the big things that I missed out on. Like I said, um, but it looked like. A, did you go two years in a row? Did you just do the one? Because there was some lads who did got to do the two. Just the one. Just the one. I just went one side. But yeah, 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 because they went back again. Didn't I think they went back again? But I, yeah, it depended I on what age you were. I can't remember if it was yeah. like if, you were, if you were a young person in the year group or you know the one. But um, it seemed like a, a good tournament. And then. In terms of your obviously getting a scholarship and stuff like that, were you one of the sooner ones? Because there were some lads, obviously, like Armors um, down the last one, so they got theirs a little bit sooner than everyone. I think mine was around Christmas. When did you find out? And how was how did you kind of find out about your, your scholarship? So, mate, this is, this is another like, so obviously at the start of the 16th season, I dummy knee, um, which like kept us out for the, like that whole season. So, I didn't actually find out, I didn't actually get a scholar until like, the start of when you started your first year scholar, mm-hmm. like I found out in that September that I was getting a scholar. So I, I came in uh, yeah. for pre season when you were all starting your scholars, like as a, just like on trial kind of thing. Um, 
and I think I was like I came in and I was like I was just I just didn't adapt to anything like I was just because I'd missed the whole season I came in unfit and like I was like you was all doing the running and, and I just couldn't I, I just wasn't keeping up with anyone I was like always behind um so I, I was thinking at this point like oh I'm getting I'm they're just going to tell us oh, like, you're not going to get a scholarship so when I started looking for like I, I think I actually went to Gateshead College um to like ha have a look about like how you enroll and stuff and mm -hmm. um, so I come away from there thinking oh I'm just gonna I'm gonna get like told that I'm not getting anything from Newcastle in a couple of weeks and I'll just join Gateshead College and like do like the football course like kind of thing there and then like a week later like uh like Joe Joyce the academy manager Rami Mann said oh we're gonna like offer him a scholar and I'm, I was I, I think at the time like, what like how was this actually happened like, I, I, literally I was like a bag of shit going in that first that pre-season, like, yeah. horrendous. They've obviously seen but, something in you, though. Obviously seen something. Yeah. It's just that same process, again, of obviously that uncertainty, which is, I think yeah. I kind of remember it now, because I was there, when I went into my first year of school, I, remember, I just had my first knee injury. So I, I think I remember you talking about going to Gateshead College. Um, but having that, like, did you, when you kind of left school, obviously everyone beforehand would have already knew breaking up for summer. They've got the contract to start a scholarship. Yeah. What was in your mind? Was it, like, do I need to go and get a job? Do I go to school and do my A-levels? Do I, or was it kind of like, I'm going to just go into Newcastle and kind of see what happens? Or was there always like a backup plan in your mind? Like, what sort of mentality did you have? To be fair, going into that summer, I didn't actually like, I didn't have a backup plan or anything. I was just literally thinking, I'm going to turn up in Newcastle and then just kind of ask questions later. Like, <laughs> well, obviously the more, I thought I would be like, all right, going into training, but like, obviously the more I was training, that like, I, could, I was absolutely miles off it. Like, I was miles off everyone else. So I'm obviously thinking four weeks in, I'm thinking, oh, I need to start, like, looking for something else because I'm thinking I'm never, ever going to get anything here. So that's when I went to Gateshead. And then, but in the end, that, it worked out all right because I ended up getting offered a, offered a scholar. But it was hard, obviously, saying, like, all you. So that, and I think everyone was, like, at that point, everyone was going, like, because they were getting, like, the first wage and stuff. Yeah. So people were going like shopping and that, and I was the only one like still like getting money off me, man, like to get the bus in and stuff. <laughs> Man, that's tough. That is that is tough though. It's almost as if like like you are left on your own. You kind of you saw it again. It's just that uncertainty, not knowing what's going to happen to you, um, and especially at that that age group, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of everything. Anyway, you don't know like a lot of lads don't know what they're going to do. Um, yeah. Leaving school and stuff, it's it's a tough time. So you've you've obviously done well. You've done something right. They've obviously seen something in you. And then from there you kicked on. So I know obviously your progression through into from the 18s to the 23s to start off, it was going really well. Um, how was how do you how did you find it the first like your two year scholarship? Did you have any moments where you kind of brought into the 23s that your first maybe your first appearance or anything like that could, that you can remember? So obviously like so the first your first year scholar like that like that didn't go to plan at all. Like I just couldn't like I said before I just couldn't adapt to like training every day. Um, and I just like obviously coming in and I wasn't fit. It just like didn't re and I could then from then I couldn't really get in the team. So I was like, I was only training. And when I was playing, I wasn't fit enough. So I was like, I was always cramping up and stuff. Um, which means that which meant I just couldn't get a run the team at all. So at the end of the first year of scholar, I thought to myself, I need to like work hard like this summer. Like coming back as a second year, I needed to be like, like hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. um, and to be fair, when I came back um, for pre-season, my second year, I was like, I felt like really fit, like really fit and strong. Um, and I think all, to be fair, I think all the coaches were shocked because I think they thought, oh, like, he's going to turn up again here and he's just like, because I think at this point, I think even one of the coaches told us that like, um, at the first year they were thinking, oh, like he's, he's finished here, he's going to just see how we second year scholar kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I turned up and, Turned up for uh, pre-season and second year, and I just kind of because I was fitter, like I got like more confidence, like like even in playing. If you get what I mean? Mm -hmm, yeah. And like I started that season really well, playing for the 18s. Um, went to Sweden, went to went to Sweden for a tournament, which was like another good good experience. Um, and then when I came back, I think it was Shane Ferguson might have been playing in the 23s at the time, like. Um, like their left back and 
I think he might, he, I think he'd only crease or something in training. Mm-hmm. So, like, the 23s have, like, ran down and said, oh, can, like, can I go up and, like, kind of take his place? Well, at least start training with him. And then, me, I just kind of, I was just growing in confidence, like, in training and stuff. Played my first game, and I think it was against Middlesbrough, like, for the 23s. Mm-hmm. And I did, like, really well. And then I just kept on building, like, building and building on every game game that I was playing. I was I was just keep getting better and better. And, like, the confidence was sky high. Obviously, at this point, I was, like, I was flying. Mm-hmm. And then it got to about Christmas time that season. Like, I think it was, would have been 2014, was it? Oh, that would have been 2014, I yeah. think. Yeah. So, December 2014. And that's when, like, all the, like, when the problem started, really. Yeah. I started feeling like dead out of nowhere, just like all of a sudden in training and stuff, just felt like horrendous. Like I felt like I was just so fatigued. Basically, I felt like even worse than when I was coming in as a first first year scholar. Yeah. And that was like, and I didn't think I could feel any worse to be honest. Yeah. How did you? How did? But what was going through your head at that time? Was it just confusion? Did you think, oh, this is just going to be a phase? Yeah. Um, or was it just like oh, I'm just fatigued? Uh, like what was kind of what were your thoughts that's what it was mate I think I thought because obviously I didn't play at all well I only played like a fair few games in, in my first year scholar so I was thinking oh it might just be because of like like the low, like how many games I've played like mm-hmm. for the 23s and I thought like obviously it's a better standard so yeah. I'm thinking oh I must just be like feeling the effects of playing like having like a fair few games in a season mm-hmm. And then, mate, it just what like it just wasn't like weeks would go, like a couple of weeks went by, and I just wasn't feeling any better whatsoever. I was trying to take like energy stuff, like you know, like over the over the counter, like like pick me ups kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Mate, they just weren't working. And then that's when I noticed, like, when I was start when I went to the toilet one time, and there was like blood. And then that's when it like obviously all started, really. Yeah. Did you did you reach out? Did you tell anybody like even like your mom, dad, girlfriend, like physios, anybody? Did you like when you started to feel that change in energy? Did you mention anything to anything? Or you just kind of think, oh, this is just one of them things that you just deal with yourself. I think um, I think I did mention it, but I didn't realize how like like how bad it was. Kind of, I thought, like I said before, I thought it was just because I was just fatigued, so I didn't really like I didn't really feel like I had to like tell anyone. Yeah, obviously until. Until they got to that, like yeah, until, yeah. So was it was it one of them things where obviously you talked about obviously seeing the blood? Was it just from that point you're like right, I need to go and see somebody, or did it kind of do you keep on trying to train after that, or did you literally just shout something out straight away? I think I trained for like a week, and mm-hmm. every time like like every time I was going, there was just more and more blood there. So I'm thinking like, oh, I need to say something here, and I was searching like obviously as you do, I was searching online. Things mad things were coming up like saying oh like bowel cancer like stuff like that and I was like oh I need to like obviously I need to tell someone now so I think I told me mom first and then she said oh like it might just be I don't know I think I forgot what she said I think she didn't really I think she said oh just see like give it like a few days and see if it settles down and then yeah, it just wasn't like like the like the Days were going on, it was just getting worse and worse, really. So I thought then yeah. that's when I spoke to them, like went to my doctors and I told the like the physios and that in Newcastle. So what point were you at in terms of obviously you mentioned you played 20 because I remember you were you were playing you played the youth cup, so I remember you getting the call up to play against the Chelsea game. And that might have been the season before you were doing quite well. You were you were breaking into the 23s consistently. What were you like in terms of were you still playing games? Why, like, were you still being being able to actually get through games at this point? That was sort of time um, where you are. No, nah, I think I think I'd st- I think I told the um, I think I was playing games, but the, every game I was playing, like, I would feel even worse. Like, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that was like Christmas time. I think I, I think it was a game against West Ham. I think I actually scored in that game, but I just like, do you know when you're just literally running on fumes? Yeah, like, I was literally just like it was just adrenaline getting us through. And um, I think that's when I went home, and I, that's when I said, like, "Oh, like I'm I'm gone here. I feel like horrendous." Mm-hmm. And um, and that's when I like told me mum and stuff, and then and told the physios at Newcastle, and then, and they were like, just said, "Oh, like we'll just 
don't train until you kind of get to the bottom of what's going on. Mm-hmm. So kind of from there, did you go and see a specialist and then yeah, kind of um, went off that? And um, so I had to like get like um, blood samples, um, like different investigations and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, it took them a while to be fair. Like it didn't, like, I didn't really, I, di- I didn't get diagnosed straight away. I think this was like mid December when I first, like when I started like to see um, the doctor and stuff. And then I didn't get diagnosed until like late January, like um, with colitis. So it took like quite a while, but obviously I wasn't, at this point, I was just literally like going into training, but I wasn't actually doing anything. Mm-hmm. So kind of what was going through your he- head in terms of not just like, obviously you would have been worried about your body and what's going on, but in terms of football, did you kind of forget about football and the main thing that you were focused on was your own health? Because obviously you were at a good level. You were like a second year scholar kind of trying to push on with the 23s, which when you're, if you're at that level, a lot of the lads who do push that high end up kicking on and getting first team exposure, yeah. going on loan places. Was it kind of like, forget about football, my health's kind of important, or was it kind of really affecting you that you, you obviously you were at such a point and you couldn't kick on anymore? I think it's because how bad I was feeling. I wasn't really thinking about the football. Mm-hmm. Like it, was, I, it was still in my back, back of my mind, but I wasn't like, it wasn't like, oh, I need to get back playing like as soon as possible. Because I yeah. just felt like, I felt like really bad. Um, and I kind of knew like, I wasn't re- really that worried about like the, to say like obviously at the end of the season like contracts and that were coming up um I wasn't really worried because I thought I had like done like really well when I played mm-hmm. so I was thinking like surely they're gonna like give yeah. us another contract mm-hmm. um but it was just more like focusing on like trying to get the bottom of what like what was going on really mm-hmm. and then kind of when did it did, did it get to a point where it started getting better or did you, did you kind of have to completely start trading off what was the kind of the next few months after that? Once I'd been diagnosed with colitis, I kind of just, I think we just kind of start training off for, um, I think they said like, give it like a month or something, like start taking your tablets. So I was then prescribed like tablets and stuff to take. Yeah. Um, and I think it was, so I was prescribed uh, steroids and um, another like, another drug, like another, um, another tablet like that was like for life really and mm-hmm. um, so I started taking them and to be fair it started settled like settling down like I wasn't like I wasn't seeing any like blood or, blood and stuff in the toilet so I'm thinking oh like, I've, like I'm, I'm like well on my way I'm gonna be like back back playing like quite soon and then <laughs> and then I think it was like a month a month after being diagnosed I think it was like late February and I was actually feeling all right in myself at this point. Like I felt like I was getting loads better, like being on the tablets and stuff. And then um, that's when I started feeling the pain in my cough. But at first I was just thinking, oh, like, it's just like muscular. Mm-hmm. But mate, like, the, like, I think it was like on the morning I first felt it. I woke up and I had this just weird pain in my cough. And I think, I'm thinking, like, have I pulled my cough, like, whilst like being asleep or something like because I couldn't remember doing anything I wasn't doing anything to to like so I wasn't actually doing any physical activity to like um to like pull a muscle or anything so I woke up that morning and my cough's like really hurting and then um so I kind of just got on with that I went into training that I, like I was still obviously going into training but wasn't doing anything um and like throughout the day it was just getting more and more uncomfortable like the pain was getting worse to the point where I went in the nighttime and I was, still, like, I was literally like crying, like it was that bad. And like, I was getting me to be, I was getting me misses and that, they like massaged me cough, mm-hmm. thinking it was just muscular. And, but, uh, and then my mom come upstairs and, and she was like, oh, like, can I, like, like, let's have a look at this. And I think like, it was dead, like red and like, like it looked like angry and it was like solid, like the cough was like literally a rock. Mm-hmm. so she was like oh like I think you're gonna have to I think she'd obviously start reading up on stuff yeah. and she was like oh I think you're gonna have to um I go and get it checked so we went through the hospital and um and we went in the room and like the nurse who I seen was like oh um she like she had a look at it and that and she was like oh I think it's like I, I, I really do just think it's like a, 
pull the muscle. So they sent us away, and I'm thinking something's not right here. Yeah. Like, literally, I couldn't walk. Like I was like, the pain was like unbearable. So like I went went back home, um, went to sleep and stuff. Woke up the next morning, and it got like got, it, I don't know how it got even worse. So um, I couldn't drive at this point because like obviously with the clutch and stuff, mm. I literally couldn't move my leg. So I had to get my mum to give us a lift into training. And I was like struggling to walk. Like, I couldn't, like, I was literally like, like really, I needed crutches really. I like, I couldn't walk at all. So I went into training and I said, like I said, the physio was like, um, cause I was, I was up, the, I was up the top end at this point. Um, and I think like Beach, it was Sean Beach was up the top end at like at this point as well. Mm-hmm. He'd been moved up. And when seeing Beachy and I was like, he cough, like, I think I've like, well, I said, I went to hospital last night and they'd see, they'd said like, I've just pulled a muscle. And I, and I said, it's like, it's just definitely, something's not right. And then he had a look at it and straight away he said like, nah, that's not like you pull muscle. Cause it was literally like he said, like he just said, me cough was just solid. Like, just like really, like you couldn't, there was no movement in it whatsoever. And that's when um, like the club doctor and that got involved. And then he sent us for, a, went, went to the field for a scan on us. Like I think it was CT, and it came back that I had like a blood clot in my cough. Yeah. So, um, like DVT, it was deep vein uh, thrombosis. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, great. Like, that's another thing. Yeah. So, so we, like, you were recovering from your, from your other thing at the same point. I was kind of getting better. Like and then this crept up. Yeah. yeah. And then, so that's like another, like, so I thought, like, like I'm buzzing, like because I, I was taking the tablets and stuff for my stomach, and I was thinking, oh, like I'm getting better here, mm-hmm. and then just a uh, another setback, really. Yeah. So that just made like, yeah, I was gonna say, what was the process after that to kind of recover? Was it back to hospital? Is there anything, any procedures or anything? So I got like uh, prescribed like blood thinning injections, mm-hmm. so I had to inject myself every morning, like around my stomach. So I, I took one in, injection a day and that was just like the kind of, like break up the clot in my cough, which was horrible because like after like a month or so, like literally my stomach was like a pin cushion. Mm. I had like, there was nowhere else I could inject myself. I was li- literally trying to find somewhere in my stomach where I hadn't already injected. Yeah. Um, and like, to be fair, like the first time I had to inject myself, it was just like, like mentally I was thinking, do you know like, it's I like, know, you're going to hurt yourself. I hate you know what I mean? and I can imagine exactly what it's like. I, you, you, got, like yeah, you know, you know I'm, like, I'm trying to like, I'm like, I can't do it. I like, <laughs> and I, I, actually, I think in the end, my missus just started injecting us, like, because mm-hmm. in the end, like, you know, like the mental block in my head was like, I can't actually physically inject myself anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, so that meant that I couldn't, because I was on blood, blood, blood thinning injections, I couldn't actually play. I couldn't play because... Um, say if I've got like a bang to the head or anything, like I think you're you're like more liable to, for like to get like a blood clot, like in your like in your head or anything, which is like obviously really dangerous. Mm-hmm. So I had to wait until I was off. I think I was prescribed them for like six months, um, and you couldn't do anything like anything that would put you at risk of like getting a ba- like a knock or like a bang to the head, or, uh, bang to the head or anything. So yeah. It's mentally that would have just wet. It's like one thing after another sort of thing. I don't know how you would cope with that. How long were you out for total with this one? With the combine? Um, I think I didn't start playing again until so this was in the February. So that this was in the February where I play with the me stomach and the uh my blood clot. And then I didn't start playing again until the October, I think, of that year. Mm-hmm. Which is like, but well, like in between that, obviously I was on steroids. I put on like I, I don't know if you you probably remember how much weight. Can you remember how much weight I, I put brief, on? I can remember, yeah, a little bit. I remember. Um, obviously, I read a book and stuff like that. Obviously, I can briefly remember at the time. How did that affect you in terms of the weight gain? Because obviously, you're you're a young lad. You were an athlete. Oh. You obviously, you were quite lean and athletic at the time. Yeah. What's it like mentally? Obviously, which you're not in control of it as well, which is the worst part. Like the confidence in that, like with that, was horrendous. Like I wouldn't get in the shower. I would hear getting in the shower at football, like anything like that would involve like taking me top off or anything. Like, I couldn't. Like obviously I wasn't like massive, 
but because I was like lean and athletic beforehand, mm-hmm. I just didn't want anyone to see us like in that state kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think I went up to like 15 stone or something, and I was like, mm-hmm. I think I was like 12, 12 stone, 12 and a half stone. Yeah, I put on like my face was massive. And um, like obviously the, the lads didn't really like the lads were like having a bit of banter and that, but I don't think they re- like they realized like why like they just thought because I wasn't training that I was just putting yeah. on weight. Maybe that's what I'm actually, saying. We're talking about it, like I said before the podcast, I didn't realize the whole thing. I thought you just had a yeah. I knew I had the blood clot in the calf. That was about it. I didn't know really that much. I can't remember too much at the time. I just thought you were out with like it wasn't anything serious. And then, like, I think someone told me, and I was like, oh, bloody hell. Uh, yeah. But within that football environment, you get battened for everything. Like, yeah, that's just, what I'm saying. Like, what it is, isn't it? But it can really affect like people who time. are struggling a little bit. Yeah. Um, and I don't think the mental, like mental health in terms of football, it's only when you started getting pushed the last like probably like, yeah. year or two. Like I don't think it was kind of a. Th- I never knew about it back then. Like yeah. it was just the, and even that was what like six, seven years ago, whatever it was. It wasn't really a thing. So you would get banned yeah. for everything, anything, and there wasn't really, it wasn't a thing that you would talk out about it. How did you cope with it mentally in terms of like at home and stuff? Was there any like? Just in that first kind of that first phase, was there any any moments like tough moments or anything? Obviously, like I think it was more because I was concentrating on getting like like better again, like healthy. Like I think the like the weight gain and that was kind of pushed like pushed to the side. Like I kind of just like pushed that out the way. Mm-hmm. But obviously, when like people were mentioning like every time someone would see us and they would think they would say, "Oh, like like Jesus, you put like you put on a bit of weight, haven't you?" But the thing is, I just didn't even like, I just kind of laughed it off. I didn't even want to go into detail about why I'd like, because it was just like, I was kind of telling the same story to everyone. Uh-huh. Um, but like, I think it did, it did affect us like confidence wise. Like I was like, like I said before, obviously being a like young, fit, like athletic, like athletic lad, I didn't like, once I put on that weight, just felt like kind of self-conscious. Like I didn't, like I said, I just didn't, I didn't hate going to the shower, like anything to do with taking me top off. I just like, literally, I couldn't think of nothing worse at the time. Mm-hmm. But, and, and obviously, and I was still on the steroids at this point. So I, I think I was on the steroids for like a good three or four months. So I was thinking like, I can't actually do anything about it either. Mm-hmm. Like normally if I put, if you put weight on you, it's like go and, mm-hmm. um, yeah, burn it off sort of thing. That's what I'm saying. So, um, and obviously, I wasn't doing any physical activity at the time. So I was just like, I was kind of just thinking, I need to stall myself here, like stop myself putting on weight. But obviously, you need to eat. Yeah. Um, Did you start so starving um, yourself or not? Did you start like not eating or? I, I, to be, I didn't starve myself, but I wasn't like eating as much like at all. Like I wasn't eating much. Like I was missing breakfast. I would never have breakfast at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have dinner, but like a tiny bit. And then I would have some tea at home, but like I was just so constant, I was just so like conscious about putting on more weight. And obviously, the more like the more it was getting in my head, the fatter I thought I was getting. Do you know what I mean? Horrible, horrible. Like, you, you know yourself, you can't control it, but you still, it's still going to be on your mind no matter what. So, when did things start getting better for you? So, when did the, the clock kind of disappear? When did you start transitioning back into football that, that first time? It was probably like the, um, Probably like June. So I think it was when would obviously everyone else had broke up for the off season. Mm-hmm. And that's when I like started feeling like that's when I would start getting um start doing more like physical activity and stuff again. Cause to be fair, I could start like because I just couldn't train with the blood thinners because like I was I could still do like bits of, on the bike and stuff, but um it was more for like my stomach that I wasn't doing any physical activity because I still felt a bit drained. Mm-hmm. But um, once I'd start like doing like running and stuff, I start like I started like doing that kind of in the June time. And that's when I felt like I was getting a bit more like back to normality. Mm-hmm. And when then you, when was your first game back? Can you remember your first game back? Um, well, it was I think it was a West Ham. I think oh, we actually, West yeah, we mentioned it. That I was going to say that was one of the games yeah. that I played. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I forgot what I don't know when that was. Was it like the? Um, the it would have been earlier time? in the. Yeah, earlier in the season, because I think Upton Park, it was like, I swear it was only a few months before Upton Park kind of changed over. I swear yeah. it would have been that season. 
Um, so it was probably like September, October time maybe of that year, if I remember right. Um, but you came on, didn't you? Yeah, I came on for like the last 15 minutes, but like I was still like, I still hadn't lost all the weight that I put on. So, mate, I come on, right? And I'm telling you now, I felt that I was absolutely, first five minutes I was fucked. I literally could not get my breath. I was blown out of my arse. I was still heavy. I'm thinking, what am I doing here? Mm. Luckily, I got that game out of the way. Um, but then the week after, um, I was back on the bench again because I still like I think like Peter Beardsley and it was I think it was Peter Beardsley and Ben Dawson were the coach at the time. They obviously knew that I was still like I was still like, actually a bit heavy, like mm-hmm. from what like from what I was used to anyway. Um, and then we played Swansea a week later, um, and I think it was Gid- remember Gideon? Yeah, yeah. Gideon was playing left back at the time when I was out. And um, anyways, so I was on the bench for that game. I think Gideon went down after like 10, five minutes or something mm-hmm. with an injury. And I'm thinking, I'm like, no, don't put me on here. I'm looking around the bench and I was like, there's no other defenders. I'm coming on here. I'm like, I, I don't need this. Um, Pete was like, oh, get ready. You're coming on. And I knew I obviously I wasn't ready at all. I think it was I was going to have to play like 80 minutes. I'm not getting through this. Because like I said before, I was I was still unfit. I still wasn't fit enough and I was still like really heavy. Well, not re- not like, not 15 stone heavy, but I was still like, I, I was still like carrying a bit. Um, so I, ended, I, I came on um, and to be fair, I actually done all right. I, I was kind of like, I wasn't doing anything spectacular, but I was just like kind of getting through the game. And then in like the last 10 minutes, uh, my legs had just completely gone. And I remember, I think it was, uh, I think we were winning one nil. And then when you got the ball, and he's thinking, and he must be looking at us, thinking, "I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna get out of here because he's absolutely blown." And I'm thinking, "You're not wrong, mate. I'm gone." <laughs> so he gets the ball, and he starts running at us, and he like, and he gets it in the box, and he's like, "Skip past us, right?" And do you know what? He just put in like a tired. My legs are gone. I just put in the right, like, just the most tired tackle you've ever seen. Bring him down. I'll give a pen away. I don't know. And uh, we ended up drawing the game one one, but I wasn't really like, you know, when you just think like, I'm playing again now, so yeah, you, I wasn't, you, I wasn't you really, really, really that good about those good good. conditions. So yeah, it's good to be back. When did you start feeling kind of like not like normal in terms of fitness normal. levels and stuff? Yeah, um, I think I, so. I went on loan to Gateshead in that. It was in that December, mm-hmm. um, and that's when I was kind of like. That's when I started to feel a bit like normal again. Like I felt like I was, I, I basically, I lost all the weight. Like the weight, like I was back to like, like peak, like peak condition. Um, and yeah, so it was like around about the, would have been around about the December, January time, like the next year. And I think that's when I actually started, um, when I came back, so I only played like a couple of games for Gateshead on loan and then ended up coming back because like, so the manager that took us into Gateshead ended up getting the sack like after two games. So then I was obviously, I started to get a bit of banter about that saying that I got the manager sat and stuff. Um, so then I came back anyway because it was a new manager and he just, he just said basically that I just, I like, I've got the lads who I want and like you kind of, yeah, plus the requirements. So he's like, oh, I just like head back to Newcastle. I was like, right, fair enough. And then I think it, this was like the January time. And that's when I started training. And I don't know how it ended. I don't know how it came about, but that's when I started training with the first team, like back at Newcastle, mm-hmm. which is obviously like a massive like confidence boost. Like after everything that had happened, like to then be training with the first team, like after after only being back for like five, five or six months. Yeah. So I was obviously that was like a massive confidence boost. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, had a good little spell. Did you go? You went away to thingy, didn't you? Um, Le, is it Lamanga? Lamanga. So, Lamanga. You went away and played in that friendly game. What was what was that like? Um, it, I actually I thought I thought I done like quite well to be fair. Mm-hmm. Like, I, th- I didn't expect to be starting though, like on that Saturday, because I think Paul Dumont or something might have been like I think he'd been injured. But he was like kind of getting. I think he was like going to be fit enough to play like the next game because it was like an it was an international break. It was like probably around like this time. Wow, how many years ago? Then, 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was like an international break, so I'm thinking, oh, like he's gonna be get he want he's gonna be wanting to get minutes into like dummy's legs. Mm-hmm. So um so I've went away with him. I've like obviously I think we were there for a week. Um and then obviously I had the game on the Saturday. And I think uh Steve McCarran was a manager at the time, he just like he said it was oh, you got, like you're gonna be starting this was on the Friday, he was like, Oh, you're gonna be starting tomorrow. Like I'm like quite well. I was at the time. I was like quite a nervous person. So I'm thinking, oh shit, like I'm, I'm playing tomorrow, like like for the first team, even though it was only a friendly. But I was still a bit nervous, obviously. It's like still a lot of pressure. Like it's yeah. the first team still, isn't it? Yeah. And I still hadn't like when I'm like mentality wise, I was still a bit like not. I, I, I thought it's being like soft, you know, like after everything that had happened. Yeah. Like my men, my mentality was still a bit like. I was still thinking, oh, I shouldn't really be in this position. So instead of thinking, oh, I'm going to go out tomorrow and I'm going to like show people like why I'm like why I'm playing at like this level and why I'm like playing with the first team. Mm-hmm. My mentality was like, oh, like, like, am I going to do well? Am I like thinking yeah. everything through? Like, I can't make a mistake. Like everything like that. I was just thinking like too negatively. Yeah. And to be to be honest, in the end, I actually had like a good. I had a good game. I like I was quite like, I was steady away, but. That's the thing. I just wish, like, mentality-wise, I was more, like, um, more positive. Yeah, it's good for you to talk about that, though, because there's probably a lot of lads who do get like, the opportunity that you got in terms of, like, whether it be a pre-season friendly or, like, a tour away, obviously, or what, whatever it is. And they probably are thinking, like, oh, there's lads who have done this before. They're probably thinking, they're probably really strong and, like, oh, I'm up for this game. But I'm feeling maybe, like, I'm shit myself. I'm, I'm, you have those negative yeah. thoughts. Like, it is normal to have those thoughts and when you're in them positions, but you just said you had a good game. Like, even if you do have them thoughts, don't, like, worry about it. Don't let it affect you. Yeah. Because if you've got the ability, you will have a good game. Um, obviously, it does just make it... There is, obviously, ways around the mentality, getting yourself psyched up for game, being positive. But if you are someone who is nervous and who is a little bit shy, they still have that belief because, like, the example that you just gave there for yourself, you still have that fair, mindset, but once I was like getting into the once I was into the game, like that would go away. Like I think because yeah. I've I've always been quite a nervous person, like before games and stuff. Mm. But like once I was into the game, like that all just like that can't completely just goes away. Mm-hmm. I remember this like the same sort of thing. Um, I was on the bench for the first team. Like I was on the bench for the first team, and this was in I think it was in February against West Brom. It was at home. Mate, like I didn't. That was actually before the Lamanga trip, mm-hmm. and that night before, like I didn't sleep at all. I was, I was literally that nervous. I was like literally shit myself. Yeah, I was only on the bench as well. Uh-huh. Um, and anyways, we so I turned up for the game that day, and I think we we'll ended the first team that ended up winning in the end. I think they beat West Brom by like, I think it was two nil or one nil or whatever. Anyways, because we didn't have any, all the left backs at the time were injured, and Rolando Aaron's ended up playing at left back. Mm-hmm. I remember he went down with a head injury in the f- like first ten minutes, right? And Steve McClowns turned the bench, right? And I'm just fucking, I'm sliding down my chair, I'm like, no, don't, not me, not me. Well, that's what I'm saying about the like the mentality thing. Mm-hmm. Like, I should be like, I should have been at a time thinking like. Pick me, like, yeah. go on. Like, not everyone's got that. Not everyone's naturally got that mentality, though. Like, it, you've obviously developed a bit of confidence. Yeah, like, do you get nervous for games, like, on the same level of nervous that you do, that you did then for games now? Nah, not at all. What are you like in terms oh, of nerves like, now? Are you, are you quite relaxed? Pretty sound. Obviously, you know, like, you know yourself, you know when it's a match day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But, like, it's a different feel. I'm pretty sound now. Like, I don't. Goes to goes yeah. to show because there'll be so many. Like, I used to be a really anxious, like really, really anxious before yeah. games as well, like really bad. But like once you get on the pitch, and then the more that you kind of do it, it's like you 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 get used to that becomes your norm. Like you'll be shitting yourself to start with, especially for you because you you're norm. Like the start off, or you got put in with the, the first team, you're on the bench. So when you drop down and then go and play twenty threes, that's gonna feel easy. Then the yeah. same thing kind of you keep progressing, you go on loan somewhere, yeah. you shoot yourself, you play. Oh, that becomes and that just becomes a norm. The same thing, the higher you go. So it is interesting because there will be, like I said, a lot of young lads who do get really anxious before games. But example like yourself, like they just you just gotta get through their moments and yeah, it is, you'll get through them, you'll be all right, and then you'll you'll kick on from there. Um, which is why it's good to talk about this. So kind of 
from there after the manga, did you have any more kind of first team exposure and stuff around that time? Or I think I'm, I was training with them. I was training with them like kind of every day. But like I think I was like players who were injured were starting to come back to fitness. So I wasn't really getting in any of like the squads or anything anymore. I think I travelled one more time. I, I travelled away to Chelsea, but I didn't actually. I didn't get on the bench. I was just like um, up in the like up in the stands, kind of watching the game. But to be fair, the food and that was nice in, in the, like the box area. So that's the best. The that's area. the best thing about just being in the squad. The food. <laughs> that was the best <laughs> thing about being the first team. And to be fair, the food unbelievable. Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Really nice. But um, yeah, so going into obviously the second time that your colitis kind of started kicking in. Can you remember the first inkling that you maybe started feeling how you used to feel anything at all? Um, it would have been the... So, with the New, Newcastle got relegated that season, the season I'm, I'm just, uh, like, under McLaren. Um, and it was, like, obviously, the, like, the championship season, but, like, the season after. Um, and, like, the first half of the season, completely fine. Like, I didn't have any symptoms or anything. And then it was like the, I think it was around about the January, February time again. Um, that's when I started noticing the symptoms coming back. I'm thinking, oh, it's all right. I'll just be able to control it with like medication. But like, um, it wasn't really like the medication that wasn't working. I, I was like to take the medication for like, um, for, I think it was, I think I got prescribed like another, I don't know, like two months or something just to like try and like settle the symptoms down. Mm-hmm. And um, just didn't, just I could just tell they weren't working. I was still like, I started feeling like fatigued again. Not as bad as the first time, mm-hmm. but I was like, I, I didn't feel as good as I, like, you know, like, that I was feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it was maybe because I was used to like feeling that way. You know what I mean? From the first time. So I kind of like, not like, I kind of like got used to feeling like shit, if you know what I mean. I know what you mean. So I was kind of, I kind of, and then I, instead of telling anyone this time, I was trying to just play on because mm-hmm. I didn't want to make myself look like a sick note. Um, and then like from that February till the end of the season, just getting through games is an absolute nightmare. Yeah. Was it, was it worse than the time before? Was it just the same sort of feeling? Same sort of feeling, like, like I was just going to the toilet like, like stupid amounts of times a day, just literally just feeling like so drained. Uh-huh. I think one game like I was that bad, but I still obviously I still hadn't, hadn't told anyone at the time that I was feeling like that my stomach was bad again. Mm-hmm. So I was just kind of like putting it off, and I was just try, kind of getting through it. Yeah. Um, and then I think there was one game at St. James's and like I was just taught like I would I wasn't with it, like I felt horrendous. Yeah. Like I hadn't slept at all like the night before. Mm-hmm. And I think instead of telling anyone that it was your stomach, I faked it. I like I faked an injury. I th- I think I said like oh me uh I think I said oh me like my leg was hurting or something like that. Just to try and get, like come off because I just felt that bad. Mm-hmm. Do you think you were trying to when it obviously started kicking, was there any point where you're trying to almost like trick your own mind and thinking that oh, like, everything's fine because there's because like a denial that it could be the same thing yeah. again? Was there that sort of thing? I think that's what it, what it probably was. I just didn't I like. I was almost like kind of just trying to like if if I don't think about it or if I keep on doing like if I keep playing, it might just like magically go away. Mm-hmm. But obviously, like it wasn't like it just wasn't settling the symptoms, and that just weren't settling down at all. Uh-huh. So was this your was this the third year score? Was it first year pro? So I can't remember. Was it first year pro? First year pro. First, first year, year pro, pro. So the year after, yeah, yeah. So from there, when did it get to the point where you were like, you know what? Like after that little like where you faked the injury, did you kind of tell yeah. someone then after that and say, "Oh no, like, um, no, I, no, I still didn't really. I didn't. I, I, I think I was telling me. I told me mum and me missus and stuff like that. And me dad. I, I, I was telling them that I just like. Obviously, I, I wasn't I wasn't right, um, but I didn't actually tell anyone at Newcastle. I wasn't telling like I didn't mention anything the physios or anything like that because I didn't want to then think like, oh, he's just he's just going to be like some like 
he's always you know, just going to be stiff all, like, all, like, all, all the time. Mm-hmm. I know, you know what I mean? And I didn't want like them to get a perception of me just not being able to like play games because I'll be ill all the time. Mm-hmm. Which I pro- in hindsight, I probably should have just said something anyway because like when it's something think... like that, it's completely different. Like, you, you do get lads who like, like, are always always injured and just they're a little <laughs> bit, of, <laughs> bit, of a, bit of a burden. And so, but like I used to be the same. Like if I had a niggle, I would like be like I'd try and hide it for ages and ages and ages because I knew like even if, like I've had so many different niggles. Yeah. Like obviously I've had big injuries as well, but like you don't want to go in and just say like, oh, like, I've done something else sort of thing because you, you just, you don't want to. But obviously in terms of your thing, it's like your actual, like your health, like your own yeah. body, it's a different thing altogether. Um, so it's, it's I can completely understand why you would feel like that, but if, if there's anybody who gets that sort of like, feeling, it's the best thing to do is just mention yeah, it's someone. Just, when, it's it's own, when, it's, when it's injuries and stuff, sometimes you can walk it off, but when it's something different, you're like, hang on, what's this? Best thing to do is just mention it to someone because you, you never know what could what could happen. Yeah, exactly. Probably like like if you if you mention it early, like mm-hmm. I don't know, they might have been able to do something. I don't think they could all, but yeah, like they might have been able to do something for us. I don't know that like might have helped, but I don't yeah. know. Um, it's, it's in the past now, and like I, I probably I should have mentioned it at the time, but like 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 you said before, like you just you don't think about things like. Um, it's clear like back, like back then, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. No, hundred percent. Again, you just you just wouldn't want to accept what's what's gonna happen. So from from after that, when did it? Obviously, when did you mention it to the club? What was kind of going back to the doctors and stuff? What was the whole process after that? I didn't actually like so from February, like I said, until the end of the season, I didn't say anything to anyone. I still didn't actually, like, tell anyone that. Were you still training and trying to play games? Still training. I, I trained the full... I, I went the full season. I trained the full, like, literally the whole season. I didn't say anything. See, I didn't... Obviously, I wasn't training. I was I was, in, I was still being injured at the time then with my knee. So, I didn't notice. Obviously, I was. I would have seen you in that training ground. But I, from my own memory, I can't remember anything, like, yeah. at all. I think it's because I, d- I didn't really... Sp- I didn't really, like say anything to anyone I, I, I wasn't like it wasn't really talked about so I, like I don't think you would have probably knew anyway I just because I, I literally didn't want anyone to know that I felt bad do you know what I mean like sometimes like, like I said before I was just trying to keep it away from everyone like not even just the physios and the coaches and like even the players in case someone like mentioned something yeah so this time obviously it was a lot more serious than the, yeah. than the first time what was when did it kind of get to the point where it was really serious? How did you, did you find out? So I think it was so the season would have finished in like May, and I went in to see like the specialist about like at the end of May, and like I think I said, I think I made made an appointment with him or something, and I just said, oh like my stomach's like really bad at the minute, can like yeah, can I like come and like see you, like to speak about it. And he's and then he booked us in for like a colonoscopy. That's like so that yeah. you have like have a look inside, like see what's going on. So um actually it wouldn't all it wouldn't have been it would have been it wouldn't have been the end of May, it would have been like the start of June. It would have been the start of June when I went in to get this colonoscopy done. So I went to Nuffield again and um like he done the colonoscopy and he come like come out and he just said like your bowels are really in like a bad condition now, like it's really bad. Um, I want you to stay in like for a few days, but I was actually meant to be going on the holiday, going on holiday on uh, like the day after. Like, so the colonoscopy was done on like one day, and I was meant to be going on holiday the day after that. Mm-hmm. So um, I said, like, I said, I'm going on holiday and I, like, I kind of want to go on holiday because, of, like, you know, at the end of the season, like, as a footballer, you, uh, yeah, like, you just want to, like, after, like, like yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you've had a hard season, you want to go, like, go away and, like, enjoy yourself. So I was thinking, I'm not I'm not missing a holiday just because of my stomach. Because I didn't have, I w- it was bad, but I didn't feel, like, as bad it was go- as bad as it, as it was going to get. Um, so I said, look, I'll, I think, in fact, I think I stayed in one night and then I went, I was going on holiday on the night time. Mm-hmm. So I left, I discharged, I kind of discharged myself on the morning <laughs> and then went on holiday, like, on that night time. And I think I was going away for two weeks. And the first week, it wasn't, like, it wasn't horrendous, but I think it was because I was on holiday. I think I kind of, like, 
like you said before, I think I kind of tricked my brain into thinking I was all right. Yeah. But I obviously wasn't. Um, and then the second week, I think we'd like moved to hotels. It was only like it was only me, me and my missus who were away at the time. I think we moved to hotels. Like I think we were going to stay one week in one place, and then we're booked another week at like another hotel. Um, and then that second week was when it got, got like re- like horrendous. That's when it like really like went downhill like fast. Uh-huh. And that week that that week that on the holiday, I literally I could not leave the room. Just literally in the room the whole time. Yeah. Um, didn't like didn't go out anywhere. Like obviously like my missus and that was like wanting to go out and do like I don't know like do activities or go for a few drinks or whatever. And I was just like stuck in the room. I just said I can't, like I can't, I physically can't go out. And then, um, and obviously when it was coming to coming to the end of the holiday, I was then worried about going home on the plane because I've been reading stuff online. I like that, like your bowel could like basically burst because of the pressure. Yeah. If it's that inflamed already, like getting on a plane could like basically cause it like burst. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, oh, I don't, like I don't. I was actually thinking about going home earlier, but because of what I was being reading, I didn't want to go. Like I was like actually like so reluctant to go on the plane. Mm-hmm. And obviously, like at the end of the week, I had to come. Like had to go on the plane home. Yeah. But like that plane journey was horrendous. Just like just so like I was actually just sweating thinking about like what I read, and I'm thinking, oh, like like I'll die. I'll actually die if like we like burst on the plane. You know what I mean? Did you, did you tell anybody about, obviously, your missus wouldn't you, obviously, what about, like, doctors at home or family at home or anything? Did you tell them about how you were feeling and stuff? Not, um, I think, so I think I'd spoke to the specialist um, who I'd been seeing at the Nuffield mm-hmm. um, whilst I was on holiday, and I said, oh, can, like, basically, I need to, I'll, I'll need to come and see you when I'm back mm-hmm. from holiday. But I think he was, I think he went away. Like, I think... Basically, I think he went on when went on holiday, mm-hmm. like when I was coming back. If you know what I mean. So the, yeah. the week I was getting back, he was going away, and so I got back, and um, I think my mum was saying, "Oh, like you're gonna have to go into hospital. Like you're like you're really ill. Like I was like I'm pale anyway, but like I come back and I look like an art, like literally like a ghost. Like I was see through. Um. So and then. So that was the day we got back. My mum was like, "Oh, I'll take you through the hospital." And I was like, "No, I don't want to go, like, yeah. cause you know, like, like everyone's a bit like our hospitals. I, like, I, I can't stand them. Like, yeah, I'm the same. Also way. now, what, like, after what I've experienced, but I was like, "Nah, I'm not going. Like, I don't want to go." And then I think I stayed at home, like that night. And then the next day, like, I just got like really, really bad. And then in the end, I was like, "Nah, I need, like, I need to go to hospital." Um. So I went to hospital on like the day after I got back from back from holiday, and then the following week. So I think that that was like the Sunday I went in, and then the following Sunday that's when I had my bowel removed. Yeah. Which was, was like, like, what was it like in terms of the obviously they would have told you that you needed a storm, and what was it like for you to process that? Because it was oh, it's a, it's a tough thing. Horrendous, like because like throughout the week. They were, they were literally like hammering us with different medications. Literally tried everything, like they just exhausted everything that they could do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was on the Thursday or the fr- Thursday or the Friday. Um, the like the surgeon come in and this like drew a like a, a mark where they were gonna yeah like were gonna operate. And I was like, "What are you doing that for?" So I was literally like. In my head, I was still so reluctant to have this operation. Like in my head, I, I wasn't going to have it. But obviously, when they come in, when they start drawing like operation, what like you know, marks for the operation, yeah. you know, yeah. it's like, going to happen. So um, and that was on the I think it was on the Friday, and then on the Sunday, I st- to be fair, even on the Saturday, I still thought, oh, I'm not, I'm not getting this operation done. Mm-hmm. And then on the sun, and I was getting my bloods taken every day, so they were saying. That it was getting worse, like the um, like all yeah. my markers, like my blood markers and stuff were going up and up every day. So they were saying, like, obviously they were like coming in every day and saying, "Look, like this, it's getting worse. Like we're gonna have to like operate soon." soon. And I think they tried 
one last thing on this, one last bit of medication on the Saturday, and it was like, um, like this is your last, like this is the la- last resort. If this doesn't work, then tomorrow you get the operation. And then, um, so the the give us the, the give us like through intravenous. It was like I forgot what the medication was called. And then on the Sunday they come in and I said, oh, like um, I think the surgeon come in. It was just so matter of fact. She was like, oh, I'm gonna go on my dinner now, and then. Um, I'm going to operate operate on you after after di- after me dinner. Surgeons are um, weird, you know. I don't understand them. Man, <laughs> like, they just do it. Obviously, it's age. God, like it was just so matter of fact. Like she was just like, oh, I'm going to go and have me dinner, and then I'll come back and I'll operate on you. And then obviously that's when I knew. Like I was just. So I was started that crying. That, was it that kind of short notice? Like, oh, right, I'm just going to operate on you now. Yeah. Now I started crying. I was like, because I knew what was coming. I knew I was going to have to have a storm. I knew I would have to have like a bag on. Mm-hmm. Would it be? And to be fair, after the operation, I still did not accept it. Like, like for a week, I, I think I was in hospital for four weeks after. And for the first week, I literally just did not. Like, they were trying to get us up on that, and I, like to to get us moving around. And I was literally like, just like lying in my bed. I was like, nah. Yeah, just kind of just rejecting it massively. Um, mate, I, I can't under, like even begin to understand what it would feel like. Like, not just. Like it's kind of it's you completely feel out of control. So you're in hospital for for four weeks, and then when you were kind of cleared to go home and start the recovery process. Yes, yeah. but so t- like, oh, sorry, sorry. Go no, you. Got, I was going to say. I was just going to say about how long after was it when you came in? Because I think I might remember right, but you came in to go on the bike one time, and no one had seen you for ages. And obviously, I was injured. Down yeah. the gym. I think you might have been on the bike like next was all like a little bit further down. How long after was it? when you kind of started um so that was so this was in the June and I had my operations and stuff and I think I come back into football the end of August yeah but bearing in mind I lost like so I went in I went into hospital and I was about 12 and a half stone and I think I went down to like eight and a half stone in yeah. in the space of uh four weeks mm-hmm. so I'd lost like that weight so quick like just because I wasn't getting the nutrients in as I was like I went through like I went through, well, it was what ended up being two operations because after the first operation, a week later, I had to go back in because my bowel had twisted. Oh, right. So I had to go back in to get my bowel untwisted. Yeah. So, which obviously made the recovery time even longer. Uh-huh. What would you say was the the toughest moment in terms of the whole the whole thing? Like, was it just the initial kind of waking up after the operation or...? the kind of time it took for you to process it all toughest moment was probably definitely waking up and like saying that i had like a storm and a bag on a million percent just like going from being a normal like not that's not normal because yeah. but you know what i mean like uh-huh. it's it's just massive like a body image like but like my confidence had literally like at that point was just gone like, i was like i was i almost just thought i was a bit of a freak you know what i mean yeah. It was a freak. I had like a bag on my stomach. Like no, like not many people. What I thought had that. Like I thought I was just like at that point I was like I'm the only person who's got this. Like yeah. I'm, I'm like my age who's got this, yeah. uh, this bag like attached to my stomach kind of thing. Yeah. Me intestine like coming out my stomach. Yeah. What was the? It was there any coping mechanisms or things that helped you or certain? Like what what was the process of you kind of like dealing with it all? Anything that helped you? Or was it just a matter of time? I think it was just a matter of time. Like I said before, I still didn't. I still like a week after the operation, I still didn't accept like what had happened. I was still just like thinking, or oh, almost just hoping that it was just a bad dream. I was going to wake up and I would just be like, none of this would have happened. Uh-huh. But then, to be fair. As time went on, I kind of got used to like having the bag and stuff. Mm-hmm. Not that I, I, I would, st- I still hated it. I still hated every minute of it. I still thought like me, I still wouldn't dare like I wouldn't come in the shower with the lads of football or anything. Mm-hmm. Like I would go and shower in like a different, yeah. like the referee's change room. I would go in the referee's change room and like like mm-hmm. to shower and stuff. Just I didn't like, but I, I know you would would have been sound about it. But yeah. like, oh um, mate, I know it's just the confidence thing, isn't it? Yeah. That's all it is. But I remember, mate, like you were training. It was crazy. I, I didn't think you, you you flew. Obviously, you got back fit to the point where you were, obviously you were non-contact. I mean, yeah. you were playing like full training sessions, like running around. 
Really How did you? Horrible. Mate, it was crazy when you were when you were coming. I think I was coming back about the same time as you um, from my injury, so we trained a little bit. But how was that in terms of getting like mentally in the right mindset to go and play football, knowing that obviously you had the storm at the time? I think obviously like it was about putting the weight back on and getting like strong first before I, like yeah. I didn't so basically the once I had my operation, the plan was to have an, another operation in January. Mm-hmm. And then another one in March. So there was like three stages and that had already been planned out. So I was just thinking, I'll just go back into football and get myself like stronger for like my next one. So like there was no like there was no thought in my head that I thought that I would be training again yeah. before like the next operation. And I think it's just like how it happened. I think like obviously like the, the the physios and like the doctors and that were like obviously made sure I was comfortable of, like doing that first and I was obviously asking their advice like is it safe to do so and stuff and they were saying yeah as long as you had like a, I had like this guard a guard which like protected like my stomach and I would just wear that and then like like you say in the end I was basically like full training wasn't it yeah mate it was crazy like, I didn't I, I didn't realise that you could do that if someone told me before obviously seeing you there like, oh, like surely you can't do that mate it's crazy nah, that's what, I thought that as well absolutely crazy it's just like completely normal did, when did you did you kind of get like completely comfortable with it or were you always obviously it would have always been in the back of your mind but was it were you at the point where you didn't really you forgot about it sort of when you were playing or forgot about when you were doing your gym gym work was it always kind of in there no nah, it was I think it was always in the back of my mind mm-hmm. I got to the point where like I could cope with having it mm-hmm. uh, I got to the point where it was like I got used I got used to it being there but I never like actually like thought or like I could be like this for the rest of my life and it wouldn't bother us yeah, but some people like some people who have the same operation up not to go like have the reversal. Right. They just keep the stoma um, and the bag on because they just think that like some people go through that many operations. They just think, oh, like, it'll be easier just to deal with it. Just keep yeah. the bag like. But to be fair, it's like I don't like. There's nothing like there's nothing wrong with that. I think some people like might find a might have a better life like that anyway because they yeah. know that. Like you know, they're never gonna have any more problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in terms of that, was it? So you, was it the second operation? Did you have that? So you were playing football and stuff. How many operations did you have to have after that? Was it still two more to go? Two more. Yeah. Two more. Um, so like I said, like I said before, it was one in the January and then one again in the March. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one from the January, like in between the Jan um, surgery and the March surgery, I didn't come back in. I just like kind of. I like recovered from the first one, ready for the second one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I didn't actually come back to football until like the April. Because mm-hmm. they're quite serious. That obviously the reversal is quite a serious yeah. procedure. A big operation. I think it took like the first one in the January one where you have like the, like all the like construction of it, like not say the construction, but just, like the making of the like yeah. pouch and stuff. Um, that takes. I think it took like ten hours. I think the surgery took like. So it was like a long surgery, so obviously the recovery, the recovery time was, um, was a lot longer. Mm-hmm. Like the second, to be fair, the second, the second operation, like the uh, the March surgery was literally just like in and out. Like, we're still we're still on, mate. We're still on. We're still on, mate. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, Technical difficulties. <laughs> um, so I so literally it was just the first one that was that was the big one and that was the one that I knew I had to like kind of get me strength up for. Yeah. Is there quite a is there a lot obviously there'll be a lot of people who have had similar things who maybe wouldn't be able to play sport again. Is it quite severe? Obviously, I don't know too much about the subject. Is it quite severe in terms of you're quite lucky and fortunate enough that you're still playing at this point? Um, yeah, well, there was like obviously there was a high profile case, uh, like Darren Fletcher used to play for I was, yeah, um, I was that. Yeah. Man United. He had the same, like, same sort of like, well, he, he had exactly the same surgery, in fact. Um, so I kind of I'd spoke to him and I kind of knew it was possible to. Like to play again, mm-hmm. but like at the, the the point where I had my first surgery, when I was lying in bed, I was thinking, "There's no way I'll ever play football again," especially at like at the standard, like we were playing at. If you know what uh, I mean? Yeah. 
in terms of like obviously going through the whole process, did you have much support like in terms of your mental health, which is like a big a big topic in football? Never mind that like with what you've been through. Did you have a lot of support from? I don't know anybody was anybody you reached out to in terms of mental health support um, in like through any really dark times. Was there any? Anything I, that you I didn't. I didn't really see anyone like like a professional group or like mm-hmm. stuff like like um, I didn't actually go. I just I kind of just used my family and stuff. Like my family were like. Like like caterers really like like the mental like the mentality side of things because I like I think I mentioned I think I mentioned before like one point I was on like antidepressants um yeah. which was like hard like after after that first surgery like can't tell you how like low I was like I was really really low um so like I, I kind of just like used my family and like my friends and stuff just to kind of um. Like get through it, if you know what I mean. Uh huh. Yeah, having a good having a good surroundings is probably the best thing that you can do. Massive. Where like t- and talking to people, like even if you don't talk out like on things like podcasts and stuff, speak to someone close, close to you. Like even just like, I heard, what was I listening to the other day? I was listening to actually it was um, what's his name? The BBC Radio One presenter. He's just done a, a TV program on mental health. Um, he's, oh, um, Ross Kemp. Is it what's his thing? What's Martin. his name? Martin Kemp. Well, well, yeah, is it? Yeah, well, whoever it is. Some, Ronan, Ronan Kemp, that's the one. We're we'll going there eventually. I watched this program last night on mental health. So he had a, um, it was his best friend who committed suicide at the start of lockdown. It was all kind of lockdown related. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen a bit about yeah, it. I didn't watch it like that. Did yeah, see and then there was, there was a guy on there who I think I took an attempt on his own life. And then afterwards, we, when he, nobody kind of woke up on his own sort of thing yeah. afterwards. Um, and he, as stupid as it was, he got a dog and he literally found that literally just talking, like expressing his emotions to the dog and stuff like that, like helped him. It was just, it was just saying the things out yeah. loud. And he started to understand his own emotions himself. So even if like, I'm a big believer in journaling, like I've been journaling for like two years when I started going through a little bit of a, a rough patch, writing yeah. down my emotions and stuff like that. Like it works for some people. Some people might think it's stupid, but it works for me. Everyone's got their own processes. Like, Everyone, you know, I'm everyone's stupid. different on, everyone's <laughs> different on different things work for different people like mm-hmm. but I just think obviously it is like in, like obviously mental health especially like now I don't think it was really looked no. looked that much like f- like a few years ago but now it's obviously it's massive and I think like if you can and obviously always like, like speaking out of all things is obviously like always like the best thing to do mm-hmm like we said every, everyone's different. Like you might have different cult me- mechanisms than me. It's just finding what works. But the worst thing to do is keep it in. But there is there is people who I've spoken to who, who who just say it themselves. Like, I just get on with it. Like some people do have that mentality and they just deal with yeah. themselves, which it might work for people, but it might work for a certain amount of time. But even just like expressing it to like your dog or something stupid like yeah, that might work. But whatever whatever it is. Um, but mate, you've obviously battled through it well, and your family's been there supporting you. And, and obviously, the, I think that the lads and stuff that we look, we were lucky that we had a really good group of lads as well. Oh so, yeah, oh like when I first come back in, like like you said, when I come back in, I was just like, you obviously knew that like, how different I look compared to what, like, do you know what I mean? When I left that summer, yeah. come back, and I was literally probably in, like two, probably still about a stone underweight or even more. Mm-hmm. Um, but usually, like all the lads in that were class with us, like, yeah. but like well, you said, tre- tre- like, normal sort of thing. Yeah, like I still have what? that ban. It's not as if like just because you're back in doesn't mean we can't ban you anymore. Like we're still gonna ban you and stuff about it, which I think is one of the best things. Just trying to keep things normal when you are. Going oh, the best thing. It was probably the best thing, like for my, pr- probably the the best thing for my like mental health was to come back in anyway. Yeah. And like all the lads were like, they would have a bit of banter about things, not like what had happened. But I think it was just like that was better for me than yeah. someone to everyone just be looking at us like, oh, come, come and say this, come and say like, yeah. come and say that. How will he take it? I yeah. would rather like like people like have like a bit of a laugh about it. Yeah, it's like well, I'm trying to think. He was brutal. Smithy was Smithy's quite brutal, isn't he? He's just like Smithy. So sometimes Smithy. he would say things and be like, "Ooh," and then you start laughing. Oh, like, oh, that's that. fine. <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> Smithy, yes. Carl Roberts, Carl Roberts. The few uh, few lines that were brutal. We used to play that like spinny game with the um, Curtis's thingy ball, wasn't it? And if you dropped it, you used to get back. Yeah. There were some good things that we used to do, man. Good change room that though. Yeah, I know it's oh, weird look, look, looking back at it. Like obviously, it's, it seems like it's been ages ago, but you don't realize how like good 
it, that sort of community thing is for your mental health, oh. especially like with lockdown and stuff. Now I don't know what football's like. Football's a bit different now in terms of change rooms and stuff. Like you've got to be distance and all that stuff. So yeah. that environment's just, and I think a lot of lads, especially in like lower leagues, like non leagues, they're going to be missing that sort of crack because um, it is. It's, it's obviously helped you massively in terms of your mental health, and it probably does help a lot of people about people realizing it until it's been taken away, as well. Yeah. Um, but I saw. Coming back into football, obviously you you still had a few years, well, a year or so left at your castle when I was left. How was it coming back after all of that and after trying to get yourself back fit again? Did it feel similar to the first time when you were getting yourself back fit, or was it a kind of different process, different mentality? I think it was I think it was actually easier um the second time to get back fit. Mm -hmm. Because I was I was more I was trying to lose weight the first time. This time I was trying to put on weight. Even though it was like, you know what I mean? Like, I think it was mentally, I think it was better to try and yeah. put on weight. Yeah. Because to be fair, I could get, I can gain weight quite quick. Like, so, like, it was like actually pretty easy. But it was just about then getting fit to come, like, to go back to football. But once I got myself into that, like, that mindset that, like, I was going back to football, like, it was kind of just like, like tunnel vision, like, it was just like there was a goal at the like there was a goal at the end of like the tunnel and I was gonna like get myself yeah. there like whatever it took really. Uh -huh. Do you think the whole the whole process of everything that you went through changed your mentality in terms of you appreciated a lot more what you were doing as a job and do you think because obviously when young lads there's so many egos in football when the young lads and maybe you get your first pro contract and you're getting trained with the first team you're going away like it can get to you and I've noticed since I came out of football I'm a completely different person to when I was in it. Do you yeah. feel that that sort of thing changed you at all as a person? Yeah, that's when, like, when I mentioned like earlier on, when I mentioned about the like the nervousness and stuff before games. I think that's that was a turning point uh, when I started actually like looking at like more positively. Like I would think, oh, I'm going to do this today. I'm going to like yeah. put the, this the like and like five crosses in. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that yeah, kind of. Yeah. Whereas before I would think, oh, I can't make, I can't do that. I can't like, can't make that mistake. Or uh, if I do this, like someone will have a go at us. Whereas like now I just, it's kind of like, that's, you, you from that be, point. You could be in a worse situation. You've always got that probably thought in your head. Like, look, I'm yeah, fortunate enough to be here. Yeah, they might as well. That's what I'm saying. It can't like, it can't get any worse than what it has. Like, that's yeah. what I think. Like, no, it's a good, that's kind of the mentality that I, like, I have. It's a good mindset to have. And like, it, it, it is, it's obviously tough that you've had to go through stuff like that to get to that point. But I think anybody who goes through any sort of thing, whether it's, whether it's an injury, whether it's something outside of football, them sort of moments do completely change you. And a lot of the time it is for the better. Uh, and you'll learn, a, just got, you just got to get yourself through it, but you'll learn a lot from it um, in the end. So when was your, when was your first game back after? Um, after Bar Barrow. Barrow. <laughs> Barrow away in pre-season. Yeah. Um, wasn't the nicest of places to, to make your return. I've been there, I've been there once when I was at Gator. It was a windy. Oh, well. it's a bad ground. It's a really bad ground. Um, sorry if you're a so bad fan. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, sorry, sorry Barrel. Don't have the name Barrel fans. <laughs> um, so uh, I think we played like, we, had, we took like 20 odd players. One 11 played one off. Um, like the other 11 played the next. Um, and I was like playing the second half. Mm. so um, but I still like obviously I'd been through like a lot like the operations and that like really took so like, toll on us like I was I still wasn't like obviously proper fit I wasn't match fit so as you know when you get like that was the only time like since when I like talked about like nervousness like I was like I wasn't like nervousness in a negative way like I wasn't nervous in a negative way though. It, was, it was more like positive nerves mm -hmm. but you know when this got like your legs and that start to go like yeah like the lactic, like the lactic acid build up, and that was just like huge. I was getting loads of lactic acid in my legs. I was like, surely this can't be right. It's like literally I'm playing like Barrow, like in, in pre season. It's not a big game. Yeah. Obviously, like what I've been through, it was like it was like massive for me. So and, and like I played, I think I played, played that, I played centre half that time. Uh, played forty five minutes, and um, did all right. Obviously, I was quite like I was quite off the pace, mm -hmm. but I was just, I was just. I wasn't really asked about that. I was just like buzzing to be back playing. Yeah. There's probably less pressure on you as well because it's your first game back. Like, I think everyone was just happy yeah. to see you, see you kind of on the pitch. 
Um, but I know exactly what it's like in terms of the first game. But I remember my first game back after my the injuries I had. An, I was to be fair, it was a horrendous game. When was it? It was Stockport. Um, <laughs> Stockport's ground. We played Burnley in that Premier League Cup. Oh, thing. couldn't. No, I, did, I don't know if you did. You go on that? I don't know. No, was, but you had a good game then, didn't you? No, I made I, my, my kicking was horrendous. I couldn't couldn't move. My knees were killing us. To be fair, all the way through the game, the way they were absolutely killing us because it was <laughs> boggy as anything. And I, we went from training on like obviously decent pitches to that. But yeah, no, I made I made like one really good save in like, the last ten minutes. I think to keep a clean sheet, and that was kind of like a nice little moment. Like all oh, right, I, I'm, yeah. I'm back now. So the rest of the game, I was like oh, I was all right. Um, it's hard doing. It. It's hard coming back from like. Mate, it's. I, I was. I was proper nervous. It's. You feel weird, don't you? You feel like well, like yeah. it feels that you're not there. That's what I felt like. It was like a surreal sort of thing. Obviously, there was. There's not. There was no real fans there. There was probably like, what like 300 people or something watching. But you still feel like. Oh, yeah. This is, this like no one. Like the fans aren't bothered if you get win or not. Like you're no. not going to get like dogs abuse for not winning. Like no. that's like at 23 level. You don't like no one really. Like, no one's coming to watch games think like shouting on like really want to win the game. Yeah, it's just about your own performance, isn't it? Really, but yeah, yeah. it is. A, it is such a weird, weird feeling, kind of, kind of coming back in. Um, but I, you've kind of kicked, you've kicked on then from there. You obviously had a good. You had, you were on the bench again in and around the first team for a little bit, weren't you, Newcastle? Yeah. So I went on. So the first season I came back, I went that room on the oh, you've been on the like, in the yeah. January. Um, I didn't really play much yet. Like I, I think I played like I think I've made like five appearances. Um, so I kind of wrote that loan off. Um, and then the season after that, I went to went to Grimsby on loan. Um, but I went there, and so I kind of enjoyed myself a bit because I'd had like a good like I was buzzing like I was buzzing like to be back playing and stuff. Right. Like the holiday I went on. After that written loan, like at the end of that season, probably enjoyed myself a bit too much. Like, Mate, to be fair, back. after after what you've been through and stuff, you deserve that. And uh, uh, kind of give us <laughs> let us off a bit, but uh, <laughs> the, um, so yeah, so I went on holiday and I just kind of just ate what I wanted, drank, just like kind of had a bit of a blow, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and then I came back for pre season at Newcastle. But you know what the preseason's like in Newcastle though? You literally don't like yeah, it's went to Spain. Like, no real running, it's just a bit nah, of like went to Spain, mate. It was literally holiday camp. Yeah. It was literally just like being on holiday again. I, I literally just come back on holiday. I was going back on holiday. You know what I mean? <laughs> there was never really running. It was like, well, I think I even joined in with the running for a little bit when I was before I was like well, I had my injuries and stuff. And it was just a few little sprints in between like little games, wasn't it? Oh, that's all it used to be. Like, even I used to be up there at the front and like I don't run. So I was like, hey, what's happening here? But yeah, it wasn't really too too bad. And then and then that's when so I went and finished that little pre-season tour in Spain. And then we like when I came back, Grinsby, um, like their manager wanted us to go on loan. So I've ended up going on loan there, but like I said, I was literally miles off it, like yeah. horrendous. The ham- um, lower leagues hammer fitness as well. Fitness yeah, is a big thing in the lower in, leagues. So all them lads have all like have been getting absolutely like twatted in this preseason. Uh-huh. And I'm like coming into this like miles off it, like just behind everyone. And to be fair, the manager had a fair few choice words to say it was Grimsy manager was absolutely formal, to be honest. Yeah. And then, so I didn't like, so the season started because I wasn't fit enough. I didn't play. Um, and then, um, so I was like, kind of just literally, I was basically going from training um, to running to then going on the row. Oh. And that's what I was doing every day, mate. Honestly, I was absolutely gone. Like, I remember go, like, Coming home from training, I would literally just go straight to sleep. I was that tired. It was just lit. It was brutal, mate. Yeah. That's just a, train a, and run. It's the only thing sometimes for the lower league, especially in terms of like the, the strength, the condition side. Of it. This blast year, there's no control in terms of like, right, you've done this much loading on this day. Tomorrow's going to be an easy. It's just now nah, every day. You're blast. That's how you get fitter. You get yeah. fitter by getting blasted. There's no control of it, which can burn, burn you out in the end. Yeah. You know, to be fair, like, and then... 
And then when I was actually going to start playing, um, and this was like, I think this might have been like September time, and I was meant to start like, so we were playing uh, at Colchester at home on the Tuesday. And this is the Monday, and the manager says, all oh, like, brought us into his office, his office, and he was like, I'm going to start you tomorrow, so you better show like, that you're worth a start kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, anyway, so I had, uh, I had chicken on that, on the night, the night before the game. And mate, I've ended up getting food poisoning, haven't I? <laughs> so, <laughs> did you cook it? Was it your missus? Oh, my no, God, I cooked it. Stitch- oh, you cooked it. Oh, man. Uh, and uh, so anyways, I went into, I, I texted the physio on the morning saying, I can't play. I had been up all night, been sick. I was literally couldn't stop being sick. So he's like, come in anyway and we'll like decide when you like get here. So I got there. There, he was like, he had a lot of this. Like, no, you can't play it. Like, I was literally like, I was ill, yeah. like really bad. So, anyways, that I knew like the manager. I, I was already in his bad books. So uh, I was waiting for him to come in and the assistant kit. I was sitting in like a little like like the medical room, and the assistant come down. He was like, the assistant manager came down. He said, like, oh, the manager wants to see you. So I've like, I'm thinking, oh no, I'm gonna get absolutely battered here. Yeah. So I'm walking up the stairs to the manager's office and I'm like, I'm thinking, oh, what's he gonna say? So I get in the office and he's like, sit down. I'm like, oh no, it's not but that's not a good start. <laughs> and then um and literally he just started li- just hammering and saying like you're a disgrace and that, like uh you had like an opportunity to prove yourself the day, like and you've like you blew it. Um he was like, I'm this close. He's like, I'm this close to sending you back to Newcastle. And I was just thinking, oh no. Uh, Your fucking chef skills have killed you. <laughs> and I've killed never, them. Never, could you be, be done toast every night before the game, keep it safe, mate. And uh, to be, but to be fair, in the end, like, I actually like, done well at Grimsby. And, mm-hmm. Like, I actually just, like, got on well with the manager. Like, I really like the manager in the end there. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was. It was it was probably it was my own fault really. Like I just come in, like I come in on faith. Yeah. And and then that happened. But like in the end, well I probably do, I'd done well for Grimsby and um probably hard, I, I think, actually got on well with the manager. I think that like when lads come from like I know for myself, obviously playing elsewhere outside of Newcastle, like coming from the academy and coming from the 23s in that sort of environment, going to lower leagues, like You've got you, know, you do have a little bit of an ego with you, and then yeah. sometimes little things like that like harden you up and feel like you know what I'm like maybe I'm I'm not as good as I, th- I think I am maybe just because I come from an academy, come from a Premier League team it doesn't like it doesn't mean that I'm better than everybody else like it's like, that person next to me if he's working harder than me he's going to be the one starting just because I've got the the kind of oh, label and yeah. the, the Castle United player um, yeah definitely changes yeah. Your, your mentality a lot. That's probably the, like that. That loan was probably the best thing that happened for us because that then like kind of give us a kick up the arse. Like the uh-huh. kind of just think like you're not you're not guaranteed to start anywhere. Like that's mm-hmm. the thing. Like, I probably went in there thinking oh because I was going on loan from Newcastle that was guaranteed to start and I wasn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. I know there's probably a lot of young lads who even go on loan to like Evo Sticks and National League North and stuff, and they go with that same mentality and they're just not going to play. And you'll nah, you just realize. Oh, when you step, when you get ready from clubs or you move on or whatever, you that's when you get the lesson. You'll you'll find out that lesson when literally you, you fight for one year contracts, not when you're kind of safe and you've got a contract at, a, at another club. When you're going on loan, going in with the mentality is in like, right, I need to prove myself, not all right, it doesn't really matter if I if I don't do well here, this manager doesn't like it, so I'll just go back to Newcastle because or back to wherever yeah. you're at. Cause when you do end up getting released from that Premier League team or that higher, that better academy, that you're going to be in the real world of, of football and it's a, t- a lot tougher environment, especially now with, with what's going on with, with lockdown and stuff, trying to get teams. Yeah. Obviously, you've you've done done well in terms of getting yourself a league team at Morecambe, um, but lads will be struggling so much with fighting for one-year contracts constantly and trying to, trying to find teams because it's, it's so hard. I think it's because there's just so many free agents like yeah. in the game. Everyone's just, it's like dog eats dog, isn't it? Everyone's fighting for the same. For like, there's only like, there's only, how, how many clubs are in the football league? Oh, like, nine, yeah. 92 or something. Like, and there's like thousands of players trying to, like, trying to get a, trying to get a, find a club. Like, okay. everyone's in the same position. It's odd, like, dead odd. 
Yeah, this this year especially has been the, probably the toughest year. Like we talked about before the podcast, toughest year for lads trying to to get up, and then a lot of them are going to have to step down. And then if they step down to like like National League North and South, they've both been cancelled at ease, and that's obviously completely killed them. Yeah, I know. it's it's even obviously that's a decent level to be going to, but it's 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 a very very tough thing. But learning that reality, if you if you are an academy or a, a club where you've got maybe a two year contract and you go on loan somewhere, make the most of that loan, like put everything into it, even if you think that you'll be fine, you you might not be. Yeah, which a lot of people a lot of people find out later down the line. Um, but I you've obviously done done really well. Well, how are you finding it in terms of at the minute playing playing League Two week in week out? Really good. Like I've I've enjoyed it to be fair. Um well in a good position in the league. we I think we're sixth. We're sixth at the minute, so we've got a good chance of um getting into the playoffs, but just need to keep winning games and hopefully come the end of the season that will we'll be up there. Yeah, good stuff. Just gonna say just a quick one. Do you ever obviously with everything you've been through, do you still still kind of is it there at the back of your mind in terms of like, is it going to come back again? Is it like, is it still kind of in there, or have you kind of forgot about it now, and you just you just kind of play your game that you do? Now that I've had my operations, um, like I should never ever get a flare like the flare ups anyway because I've like I've had my whole bowel removed, mm-hmm. so like there's no chance I can get colitis. Like I got like I don't really I'm not cast as having colitis anymore because everything's been removed, so like it's basically got rid of the problem. Mm-hmm. But like. Um, I think every now and again you can like so, like say if you eat something I don't know if you eat something dodgy like but I think that's the same as everyone if you eat something dodgy obviously you're going to get a bad stomach but yeah. um, on the whole since my operations I've been like perfectly fine so yeah no that's good man it's good to hear like everything that you've been through is crazy and obviously like I, I knew half the story at the time and now looking back and talking to you again kind of thing makes you realise even from back when you were younger like we're starting off with that like the six week trial thing You've had a lot of uncertainty and yeah. things, and then even when you went into your your, your first year scholar that you weren't signed on, you could have been going to Gated, and then everything that's happened since, you've had barriers, you've had tough times, but you've just you've got through them, which obviously shows a lot yeah. to your character. And you're you are a, a really good role model for a lot of young lads, not just in terms of obviously colitis or anybody who's suffering with that, but yeah. in football in general, because like football is a, a tough career. Like any young lad who's listening, it's tougher than you think it's going to be. Terms of trying, it, it doesn't run smoothly for everybody. There is a few lads who it does run quite smoothly for, but ninety nine percent of it is it's a lot of a mental challenge and it's ups and yeah. downs and getting released, trying to come back, injuries, all that sort of stuff. So just be prepared for like the mental battle. And obviously, you you fought through it really well, mate. Cheers, so man, three questions at the end, which I ask everybody. Did you have a little look at these? I've had a little look at them. I should have prepped you a little bit more for them. So, yeah, the three questions <laughs> I ask everybody. Uh, three people you'd like to invite round for dinner, coffee. They can be past our presents or anybody you want. Um, going to say... I'm going to say the Queen. There we go. The Queen is my first one. Just because I just think, like... I don't know. I just think she'll be interesting. Yeah, have a good crack. Um... Gordon Ramsay. What's he, what's he not get food poisoning anymore? Don't get food poisoning. <laughs> the food will be decent. Um, and he's got crack, isn't he? I, I love yeah, watching this. Right. Like, you and um, Charmin used to like the old Hell's Kitchen videos. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Used to like them ones. No, I love them, to be fair. Um, the third one, I'm going to say Eddie Hearn. Yeah, he's a, if you listen more. to his podcast on the yeah. performance, very it's interesting. Yeah, like his stuff, I, I read, I've just read his book, and it's just like, just basically his mentality was just like, I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get, gonna, gonna get here. This yeah, so I'm gonna do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you started reading a little bit more? Because that's something as well. I remember when I was like young and I started listening to the podcast and reading stuff in football, especially get the piss took out of you. But I think that's yeah. becoming a little bit more kind of accepted oh, as well, like mindfulness yeah, oh, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I've just like over this past year, I've like just started uh, reading like a lot more. Like, you know, like the, um, do you know them, the people of SAS Who Dares Wins and stuff, yes. that more, uh, and Middle and stuff. Yeah, I've yeah. just started reading like their books and um, obviously Eddie Hearn, I've read like a few footballers' books and just, I don't know, I think it, I think it like, I've not like, I don't know. I think it's a bit like common in it. Like, you know, when you're reading a book, I don't know. I think yeah. it's a lot better than just going 
Uh, I find it, one of the reasons I started the podcast was because I'm really interested in people's mindsets and what they, how they deal with yeah. adversity, like bad like things happen in their life and how they get success because like it's not smooth, right? Everyone's had like bad things that have happened in their life. Um, there was one I listened to that I can't remember which, oh, is it Ollie, who's one of the SES? I can't remember his last oh, name. Ollie, uh, Ollie, Ollerton, is it? Ollerton, yes, Ollerton. that's the one. I listened to a podcast with him and I didn't realise when he was like, was he six years old? He was very young. I think his family were at something to do with a circus and he was attacked by a giant gorilla. Like, yeah, yeah, literally, yeah. Literally attacked, like, and then he died. You know, like, it, it, things like that you, you don't know yeah, about. Yeah, like, Crazy about, like, well, how people's mindsets change. And um, so that's why I've started looking to that. Like I said, I, I started listening to podcasts when I was in football, but kept it on the quiet. But now I feel like it's a lot more open. Yeah. Um, and people have talked about mental health stuff a bit more, which is great. Um, but yeah, second question. Three people you'd want to train with. So it can be football related or because obviously it's, I'm a personal trainer now as well. It can be in the gym if you want it, if you want anybody to train in the gym. So football you know related. Or... So, yeah, I know you, mate. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> Love the gym. I'm gonna I'm gonna say, can I man, can I say a manager? As much, like, of course I'm, you can, mate. Yeah, yeah. First one, Guardiola. Yeah. I just like I would love to see like just be involved in one of his training sessions. Like, like imagine playing for him. Like, yeah, it's mad. Different like, again. Like, different detail mentality. And, like, yeah, yeah. Um, I would say. I know a lot of people would probably say this, but uh, Messi. Yeah. Lionel like, Messi. Like saying that. Like obviously because I'm a defender, I don't know whether I would actually want to train with him or not. Probably made as well stupid. Um. But Messi would probably be like up there for me. Ooh, third one. Um, you know, gonna say it's a bit of a cop out, but I'm gonna say Ronaldo as well. Yeah. Just Messi, I, I don't know, like, because obviously when people compare Messi Ronaldo, like, I don't think you can compare the two. Like some of the things Messi does is just like mm-hmm. out of this world, like ridiculous. Whereas like where's Ronaldo? Like I think Messi's talent comes more like natural. I think it's just like natural talent, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Whereas Ronaldo's like, worked, I like, like Ronaldo's like, ethic and his mindset and everything. Like, I, like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Ronaldo fan of Messi just purely because of his work ethic and like what he's been through. Obviously, in terms of his backstory as well. Um, but yeah. Like talking about yeah. mentality with Ronaldo. Ronaldo is literally like, like even now you'll get asked questions like, "Oh, who's the best player?" Like, and you'll just say, "Oh, me." Yeah. Whereas like Messi, I don't know, like, would he? I don't know if he would say that, but like that's just like different men. Like both just got two totally different mentalities. Like Ronaldo was just even now he's like how much money he's made and stuff. Yeah, like, he, he, switched, like, he switched on to everything else in terms of like he's got hotels, yeah. businesses, and stuff like that. Oh. So he's. He's clued into everything else, whereas Messi's just like just a footballer, isn't he? Yeah. Just a very wow. good, just a very good one. Um, and then yeah, last just, one, just, very, just a very just a very above average. <laughs> <laughs> and then last last question, Nick. One thing that you'd say to yourself five years ago. Probably good luck. <laughs> All the best because it's gonna be it's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be a roller coaster, but I don't know, it's probably yeah, good luck, but it's it's been worth it in the end. Like uh, right now I'm my like, back player and I'm healthy. Um it's probably worked out for what for what like what I've been through it's probably worked out quite quite well in the end. Yeah. No, I mean that's positive, mate. I like I like how I finished on that. But it's been an absolute pleasure. And I appreciate you obviously talking about everything on there. Um if anybody, I don't know if you, you you've got an Instagram stuff like that. So I, if, if, yeah. people wanna, if people want to message you or follow you, or whatever, I'll put your Instagram in the uh, the show notes and the description stuff down below. Um, sure. Whatever, mate. But it's been a pleasure, mate. Thank you very much for coming on. No, thank you. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. No worries, no worries at all.